Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about how to start planning, especially as an entrepreneur or a serial entrepreneur or a multi-passionate with a 9 to 5 and a side hustle. I'm a professional planner. I have a business. I have a business coaching business talking about planning and reaching goals all the time. So I think this video will be the perfect start into our how to plan as an entrepreneur series here on this channel. I want to give you some really basic but useful and not generic tips here today to help you use your time better or see your time better at least. So of course, before this video, I planned out this content and I have written some notes and my phone. So I'm going to be checking that every once in a while to give you everything you need to know. By the end of this video, you'll feel much better about planning and much better about how you use your time. So let's start. There are two things that you need to be thinking about when it comes to planning as an entrepreneur or a person with a side hustle. Number one is how do I use my time better or how do I leverage my time better to be able to find time to run several things at the same time, to be able to do more things in a certain period of time. And number two is what type of planning is the best and is most suitable for me as a person and my business. I have done a video on my channel before talking about all of my seven businesses and my multiple income streams. And if you haven't watched it, I will just give you a really brief idea. I have one product-based business and several service-based businesses. Some of them are scalable like YouTube and some of them are just exchanging time for money. The nature of your business will determine the nature of your planning and the essential things about planning that you need to apply to your life. And I am sure, don't get me wrong, I'm sure that you clicked on this video to just improve your system because if you are running several things at the same time, several businesses or a main job and a side hustle, I'm sure that you already have a system. Maybe you have some lists, maybe you have certain notebooks, maybe you've been using a planner, maybe you've been using some electronic means, but I'm sure that you have a system because you have to, right? Um, but I am here to tell you, let's assess if that system works well for you or not. Let's start with what I said in the beginning. Let's start with number one, using your time a bit better. And I made some really good sentences here, so I'm just gonna read. Um, for this, you need to understand basically two things. One is how much do my processes take on average? Like if you're creating social media content, how much does it take to create one piece of content? Or if you're creating products, how much time do you need to create that final product or whatever your processes are like it, it depends on again your your business and the nature of your business but you have to know exactly your step-by-step -step process and how much time each step takes in that process and the second thing is how do I spend my time right now? I didn't have to read that. So basically, this is time tracking. It's really important to understand what you're currently doing and what could be improved. So for the first part of the first tip, start writing down all of your processes. Like if a new client comes into your business, who talks to them first? What happens? Do you email? What is written in that email? Do you take five minutes to write that email? What happens next when they answer? Like have a flow of business, have a flow of actions for each and everything regarding your business. This is the first thing that you need to start doing, especially if you're running several things at a time. Write down the time everything takes and also write down the frequency. Maybe you're going to do something once a month. Maybe you're going to do something every day. Write down these and keep them aside for later. And now the second part of the first step, how much time do you spend on each and every task? Do you spend time on creating mostly or do you spend 80% of, the, of your time just with admin tasks and emails and planning and you know things that are not actually creating products. If you already don't have that data, start tracking that. I recommend using Google Calendar and time blocking. You don't have to plan to use Google Calendar. We can talk about it if you're interested. Leave your comment down below and I'll understand if you wanna see a video about time tracking, not necessarily planning with Google Calendar. But what you do is basically after you do certain things, you just go to your Google Calendar and you just block that time. I prefer to give a color code so I can see at a glance how much time I've invested in a certain thing in that time. So I have a color for personal things, I have a color for YouTube, and that's how I know 
how I basically use my time. And if you do it for a couple of weeks, you already understand if you're a productive person or if you're just doing admin things all the time, which could be done by somebody else, not the business owner, right? If you're like me and you don't like electronic things, you can also do it in a planner or a notebook, a time tracker, anything to the means. Just do it for a couple of weeks and try to understand how you normally spend your time. And now we start with phase two. Remember all those processes, all those action steps, all those things that you need to do for your business, they have to go somewhere because they will all take time. So you have to put those things to certain areas. For my planning system, I love using physical planners. I have my planner with me all the time, open on my desk because you can't ignore a physical planner. You just can't. It is there in your face. It is super easy to close a browser. It is not as easy to ignore a physical planner. And that's why I love it. Also, I think it is the meditation for the busy entrepreneur. And we will talk about that concept on this channel on a later video. So make sure you subscribe to not miss that one. But if you're not that person, if you don't like physical planners, you can use electronic planners. Just make sure that you're assigning times to each and every process in your business or businesses. And here on my phone, I'm giving you the best rundown. So today, what you can do is to make a monthly page on your planner or on Google Calendar or anything you use really, and write down a list of goals for each and every single one of your businesses. If you don't have multiple businesses and you're listening to me, maybe you're interested in launching your business or maybe you're just busy with other things happening in your life. So you can apply this for several or every area of your life. If it's, you know, if you want to, you can do it like for personal things, for social things, for health, for home, for this, for that. But write down the list of monthly goals somewhere in your planner or electronically. Next step is to go to weekly. So that's everything you do for the monthly. That's nothing complex. I'm gonna give you simple, simple, simple things in this video. And this is the one thing that you do for your monthly planning, just writing down goals. And now we go to weekly. There are a couple of things that you need to do for your weekly. One is, this is key, this is amazing, like listen. This is really important. You should have a list of weekly recurring tasks, the things that you need to be doing every single week. I do have that list and I put everything to a certain day as well. So for instance, every Monday I do certain things for my business and certain things for my personal life. I vacuum every Tuesday. I do my laundry every Wednesday. If you, if you want to do it like that, you can do it like that. Or simplify that as well because you're already busy you can just write a list of weekly recurring tasks these are the things that i need to be doing every single week that's it you have that list you know your routines hopefully when you wake up your morning routine how much it takes your evening routine your work routine maybe you know those things as well you have your um really important dates your meetings your birthday things your events you already have that probably and those are the three things that you can now put into your planner system if you use google calendar feel free if you use a planner same thing just put on those three things first the routines and non-negotiables of the day second the important dates and important you know meetings and stuff because they might move the things that you do weekly. So maybe you want to do vacuuming or maybe you want to do emailing every Tuesday, but if there is a big event on that Tuesday, for that week, you're going to have to move your, you know, emailing to another day. Number two is after you put in those every week things, the second one is the things that should happen on that particular week, right? The things that you need to be completing that has to happen that week. These are also some appointments, some meetings, but there might be some deadlines, for instance, or you put yourself a deadline. And the third thing that you put into your weekly plan is stuff from that monthly goals list, right? You made that first step, and now you can put those things into the days that are looking a little bit more emptier, the days that are looking that are a bit less likely to be, you know, busy. <laughs> so you put in those things because you want to improve. You want to do something for your businesses that will take them to the next level all the time. You can't just focus on the recurring and this week things and not think about the bigger picture because if you do that, the business will just be where it is today, right? Number three for this, this weekly planning thing is to color code. You can color code depending on the business. You can color code depending on the task like how it's done maybe you write 
blog posts and Instagram captions and descriptions for YouTube, then you can, you know, color code these things in the same color or, you know, like similar processes basically. This is called batching. We're doing it in the terms of color to be able to understand where our time goes right now. But again, we will talk about this in the future videos. I will make a dedicated video for batching, for doing things like similar things at the same time to, you know, empty up more space in your weekly calendar. That is another video, but just for now, keep the color thing, right? It, it will make you understand what happens, how often. And my bonus tip when it comes to weekly planning, because you've been watching until now and you deserve the bonus tip. So what I want to tell you is we are, as entrepreneurs, we tend to be very responsive sometimes. Like when we're expecting clients, when we're expecting other businesses to collaborate with us, we, we are always on top of our emails, our social media, and sometimes that's just exhausting. And I think we shouldn't be as responsive sometimes. I, I like the fact that I don't get back to some emails until the next day. I feel like that is a more flowy conversation rather than just answering back and forth for 10 minutes and then nothing until the next day, if you know what I mean. So my tip is to assign a certain time every day to just, you know, respond. For me, it is from 7 to 7.30 every morning I answer to messages, to social media, to emails. There's a list in my planner, my correspondence list, where I need to check every morning. And it is a, it's not a short list, okay? It is a list of 15 different platforms to check for all of my businesses. But I do go through that list every morning so everything doesn't accumulate, but I'm not responsive. So when I'm not answering, so after those 30 minutes are over, I just put my phone, put my emails off, like turn them off and put my phone away and I just create content or create things for my businesses. So you can do it once a day, you can do it twice a day, depending on your email load basically, but don't, don't respond throughout the whole day. Just that kills your productivity. Also stats, don't check your social media stats every day, all day. And now number four for creating a plan, for a daily plan right now, every morning take just five minutes. It's not much, just five minutes to plan out your day. I'm not saying that you should plan out every single minute in a day, but at least plan out when you're gonna eat, plan out when you're gonna be working, plan out when you're gonna be working out, when you're gonna be resting and all of that stuff. And always, always, always leave an hour of a blank time, like a you know, white space. So if something goes wrong or if there's an emergency, your plans don't just, you know, fall apart because that's the one thing that demotivates me the most. I just hate when my plans don't work out. And I'm not saying this in an obsessive compulsive way. I just think a lot about how I plan and how I use my time. So when something comes up and I can't, you know, go on with my day, it just bothers me. So I always leave some area in my planner for emergencies. If you finish earlier, if you don't need that time, if there is more space in your hands or more time in your hands than you imagine, great, do something else. Take something from tomorrow's to-do list or do something that will move your businesses forward or do something that is you time, like self-care, because as entrepreneurs, God, we need that. And the fifth and the last phase of tip number two, basically, is about how you go on with your day and how you work with your plans during the day, because this is what I mean. Basically, you're following your plan, everything is great, you, you know what you're gonna do, but then you receive a phone call, somebody is asking for something, or you receive an email and that creates work, and you don't know where, where to put it, and it is kind of urgent, and you wanna do it right now, or you don't know where to write it down, so. This is, this is what I'm talking about. You basically take notes throughout the day, but you don't act on these things because you made a plan already in the morning and if it's not like incredibly, incredibly urgent, just stick with the plan and write them down. What I do is I have a section in my planner on the day for the notes and to-dos that come up that day. And what I like to do, if I can do it that night or that evening, great. If I can't, every Sunday, I just sit down and clear those notes. If I need to assign them to a new day, I just assign them. If they were just information, good, they can stay in my planner. I have, you know, like access to them. But I, did, I don't add those things to my to-do list because that's, that's what happens generally with very busy people. You have your list 
of 10 things that will take eight hours and then throughout the day, 10 more things add to it and you end up with a to-do list that still has 10 items in it and you feel like you're not accomplishing anything, you know? So have a dedicated space for the new tasks and just five minutes before you finish work, maybe you just go over that list and see if there's something really, really urgent to put to tomorrow's to do and remove something from tomorrow to, you know, put onto whatever day it is. So that's what I would suggest when it comes to things that pop up. All right, guys, that was it. I think for my how to start planning for busy entrepreneurs and multi-passionates. And I am looking forward to your comments, especially please do leave a comment down below telling me your biggest problem when it comes to planning and time management, because this is where I get my inspiration. You tell me your problem and I create, I try to create a solution to it and film a video here. I hope it was useful and I hope you'll be able to use your time a little bit better right now. I'll see you in my next video and don't forget to check the description below for a lot of links and other things to watch and all that goodness. Bye.